decided to make this video real quick to address some potential questions that I think are probably going to come up based on the review that we did um, with each other. Okay? So, um, what I wanted to go over is just the inverse Fourier transform and the Fourier transform of cosine and sine. And the reason I wanted to go over that is because it's actually uh, pretty important for uh, what we are um, doing at the moment. So what you see here is the inverse Fourier transform, or literally just a function, cosine omega naught t, and that turns into pi times this entire quantity, the delta Dirac function of omega minus omega naught plus uh, delta Dirac function of omega plus omega naught. So let's just graph that real quick. And let's graph it in uh, amplitude density phase. So the uh, phase is actually, there's no phase for cosine. So I don't need an absolute value. So I'm not going to put one. So what we have here, because of the delta Dirac function, we have a time delay of omega. So that goes here, that's omega naught, and then this can go, because we have also plus a time delay of uh, positive omega naught, so if you have a time delay, but it's a plus, it actually is a minus, so negative omega naught, and we know that it's just literally the amplitude of whatever it's time by, right? So bam, pi. If this is not multiplied by anything, right? Good. Okay, so it's here pi. So hopefully that should clear up some of the issues that you might be seeing, um, you know, somewhere. Now let's go to sine omega naught t. And um, what I wanted to show here is actually there is a phase difference. So, um, Totally omega naught. So let's just call this. Um, uh, let's just call this omega one, and let's just call this omega two. Okay. So now sine we're using omega two as a fundamental uh, frequency just for this function. So looking at this, let's actually because there is going to be a phase shift. So we'll just take the absolute value. To take the absolute value, it has to be positive. Again pi is again absolute value, so you're not going to look at the phase shift. So boom, and it's going to be pi again at omega 2, negative omega 2. However, there's a phase shift, and from what we can tell here, it's going to be a positive up this way and a negative that way. So the phase shift is going to be pi over 2, negative pi over 2 at omega 2 at negative omega 2. Okay? Hopefully that clears up some things. So the Fourier transform, remember, is linear. So that means you just distribute it. So let's say we wanted to add these two things cosine omega 1 t plus sine omega 2 t, right? And we wanted to turn that, I'm going to erase this real quick. Actually, no, I'm not going to erase this. So I'll just write down here. And we wanted to transform that, right? So applying the Fourier transform to this, what's going to happen is it's going to linear, it's going to just going to distribute. And what we're going to end up is this plus that, right? This plus that, which literally just gives you this plus that. So this plus that, right, would literally, and let's just make them, for the sake of that, I didn't need to, so I'm going to because we're adding them. And let's just say that these are more spread out than these. So negative omega 1, negative omega 2, neg or positive omega 2, positive omega 1, boom, 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 
all that pi, right? Now for the phase, cosine, there's no phase shift. Boom, boom, sine, phase shift here, here. Pi over 2, negative pi over 2. Okay, um, and I, just as a quick disclaimer, I'm just going over this same as you guys. It may not be 100% correct, but this is my understanding of it to my best guess. Fins.